When state leaders were planning construction of Sussex 1 and 2 prison in the late 1990s, they promised Sussex County leaders it would bring multiple benefits. It's going to be 700 jobs and all this local revenue. Since the prison property is state property, it doesn't have to pay taxes to the county. But state leaders at the time promised Sussex County money in the form of payment in lieu of taxes or a service fee based on the value of the land. That value, when, the, when they first came in, would have been around 500000 right at $500,000. Money the rural county not only needed, but depended on for their safety. Most of it was always dedicated and used for fire and EMS services. But county leaders say in 2010, outgoing Governor Tim Kaine presented a budget to incoming Governor Bob McDonnell that cut the money being paid to Sussex County. We were cutting virtually every line item in state government because of the recession, so I wouldn't be surprised if the payment in lieu of taxes got cut like other things. The former governor also says it was a cost-cutting measure for the short term. If I'm right in my recollection of it, it was certainly meant to be temporary during the recession. When times improve, then, then uh, you should go back to kind of where you were. But the money that had been paid to Sussex County never came back, and without it came a problem then we had to then take general fund money and start funneling it over to EMS. And you know, even though we still had to buy fire and EMS to the prisons, there was no money, no revenue coming from them. It's now been 13 years. And it's never been put back in. The county hasn't received payment in lieu of taxes from the state since 2010, yet county leaders say the cost of the prison in the county has continued to go up. And now it's the taxpayers of Sussex paying for the prison. When the prisons came into the county, it increased the load on our clerk's office because every crime that happens in there has to be filed in the clerk's office. The prison has a major impact on the Commonwealth's attorney's office. Uh, Sussex 1 and 2 make up the majority of the serious felonies that we have for the entire county. So many crimes. It, it's, it's more work than the office can handle. It's an administrative burden. It's a financial burden. So money from the state would make a big impact on his office. It would give me an opportunity to stand up an additional full-time attorney to prosecute these cases. And what may be the biggest burden in the county comes down to ambulances. 13 to 16 calls a month to the prison. Calls Eric Fly says ties up a county ambulance for hours. The prison, he says, taking from the county and not paying back in any way. 700 jobs in two prisons. We just ran the numbers last year. 27 out of the 700 of those jobs live in Sussex County. 27, that's it. County leaders say the prison now costs the county money, money that could be made up if the state again made up for the lost tax dollars. It'd be around $800,000, we think, a year now. Well, I think the state does need to offset those costs. Delegate Otto Waxman has twice tried introducing bills in the General Assembly to put back in the payment in lieu of taxes both didn't pass. That means a lot to a small county like this. Uh, you take 2013 to now, that's 10 years, you know, that's close to $5 million that they've lost. County leaders say they've tried since last August, 11 months, to talk directly with Governor Glenn Youngkin. There's over 20 requests from me on behalf of the Board of Supervisors asking for a meeting with the governor. Most requests, Fly says, went unanswered. One reply suggested he talked to the County Board of Supervisors, the board he sits on. This is not political. A Democratic governor took this funding out. We're asking a Republican governor to put it back. So it's not politics. CBS 6 asked the governor about the concerns of Sussex County leaders and what they perceive is a lack of response from his administration. We are absolutely willing to sit down with, with everyone uh, with regards to making sure that our, our correctional system uh, is being run well and supported well. The governor did acknowledge he hadn't been made aware of the Sussex County concerns. Uh, I am uh, not directly familiar with this particular issue, and uh, but we'll look into it. The governor's staff disagrees with Supervisor Eric Fly's assessment that their office hasn't made contact with him. They tell me their office has been in contact on a half dozen occasions, starting in early January, with the latest being on April 19th, a reply from the Secretary of Finance, but none of those replies have resulted in a sit-down meeting. 
Now, with fire and EMS funding critical, county residents will be the ones having to pay the price. If we don't have that money put back in, we are going to have to raise taxes or cut the school system in order to fund fire and EMS. While Sussex County is 493 square miles, its population is quite small, nearly 11,000. Its annual budget is around $38 million a year. So a tax increase would be a burden on the citizens and wouldn't add up to much. We raise taxes by a penny. We only generate $80,000. We are at that apex now where we've got to either drastically reduce, which means cutting the school system, um, or we've got to raise revenues. That's where we're at. The bottom line, they say, is there has been no reply for a sit-down, face-to-face meeting with the governor to discuss their concerns. And county leaders believe time is running out, both for their budget and before someone winds up getting hurt because an ambulance is tied up. In Sussex County, Wayne Koval, CBS 6 News.